Cheryl English. I have three kids. They are 19, 21, and 23. Trista Sanders, and I have two kids. Tessa is seven, and Isla is four. I'm Leanne Breslaw. I have a five-year-old daughter, Hannah, and a two-year-old son, Micah. I'm an accountant. I'm Lauren. I am an attorney with the city of Cedar Park, or full-time, 40 hours a week, sometimes more. Harris is almost two. It'll be two in June. Ever since they've been in this in this world, I have been working, period, since I was 13. Initially, when um, I had my son, I had gotten my real estate license. I, I thought I was gonna go into commercial property management because that's what I was working in. Then I had my son, and I remember when I had to take him to daycare. And, um, you know, six weeks is not really a long time to be with their baby. And I flew out of the door to go get him from daycare. And I remember driving home and I was like, I'm like the worst mom in the world. I should have taken it serious. And, you know, I could be selling real estate full time and, you know, be with my kid. I had a little bit of a breakdown about a week before I went back to work and um, was just reading about transitioning to daycare and realized he was way too young to be going to daycare. I had to have a lot of reassurance from family and friends. Um, so the first week or so, I'd say it was really, really tough. And then after that, it got really easy and it was actually good to be back to work. So then it was tough that I felt like I should have been more guilty <laughs> that I'd gone back to work. After that, I think we finally, after about a month or two, got a balance going, got a routine going. And um, I think Harris really appreciates the time that he gets to be with his friends at school. And I definitely appreciate the time I get to spend with my coworkers. And then we just try to make the most of the weekends that we have together and the time in the morning that we have together. See, my journey in being a working mom is I've worked full time since I finished grad school and then um, had my daughter in 2012 and uh, was fortunate to work for a company that had a great maternity leave. And but then I also had a pretty difficult uh, work life balance. It was a lot of hours. And so I moved away from there and ever since have been at a company that is really flexible and has been really supportive of working moms, which I have had another child since then. And um, I've been there ever since and I feel really lucky that I'm at a place where I have uh, an excellent support system around me for being a working mom. I knew I always wanted to be a mom and I knew I always wanted to work. I just didn't know how I was gonna be able to put two and two together until I was basically, I had to make that decision. I lived in fear a lot of even getting pregnant. Like, how are we even gonna make this work? So my husband goes, who cares? We will, we'll make it work. So I eventually just kind of started cutting back my hours to where I can just work three days a week instead of five days a week. You know, initially I, I wanted to be a stay at home mom, um, but as my life has progressed and things have happened, I see that it wasn't a part of God's plan to be at home, but when my journey allowed me to go into my profession full time and I became um, self-employed, then um, I, I, had the I had the best of both worlds. I could still work and have that flexibility to be able to be with my kids. And if they needed to stay home from school because they were sick or had a doctor's appointment, I could make my schedule around that and I could work from home and be able to take care of them. Law school was not cheap, so we, we both have, Eric and I have student loans to pay off. Um, so I've definitely dedicated to at least 10 years of public service work um, in hopes that I'll have some of those loans forgiven. Um, but I think even after that, the plan is to still keep on working because I do find a lot of value in the work that I do. Um, and so far, I feel like I've been able to have a good balance between being a mom and having that job. I think I would still choose to work if I didn't have to. Um, I'm just the type of person who would not handle well, you know, not not being outside of the house and not using the degree and the license that I worked really hard to get. And I think it makes me a better mom, um, you know, having that outlet and that time where I get to really, you know, use my brain and use um, all my education that I worked really hard for and then I can come home and spend quality time with my kids. It makes me feel good. No, I wouldn't want to work full time if that was it. I, if that was my choice, no, I wouldn't work full time, but it makes me feel good and I 
believe that my daughters get a lot from it too, seeing that kind of can be super mom at the same time of being able to be a mom and a wife and bring home money too at that and being able to for them to see that I can juggle it all. If, if everything uh, else were equal and money were no issue, I would probably at least go part-time. At the end of the day, I do see myself still working through most of my life and, and Harris's early life. You know, I miss out on some things with Tessa being in school. There's times that I miss out on some parties. I mean, hearing from your kid, oh, I wish you could have been there, Mom. So-and-so's mom was there, and so-and-so's mom was there. You weren't there. So yeah, that tugs at you. So I try and make it up in other ways. I think just sacrificing getting to see Harris's development um, in the milestones that he meets firsthand. I hear about some of them from the teachers at school, and um, and when I see him learn new things like the alphabet or learning to count, I feel like they definitely had more of a hand in that than I did myself. And I want to be able to teach them all of those things. I think for me, it's just all about balance and priorities. So, you know, I don't get to drop them off and pick them up from school every day, but when there's a parent party or a school program, like I'm definitely there and I'm able to balance that and work that out with my job to where I can do those things that are a high priority for me. I think my business was more sacrificed than my children because I made them a priority. I had friends who were in real estate that would, you know, come home at midnight and two and three in the morning from, you know, out and writing contracts and stuff like that. I didn't want to be that mom. I wanted to be there when they woke up and I wanted to be there when they went to bed. And I was not willing to sacrifice my children for my business. So that was something that God had to work out. And he did. I have to say no a lot. And that tugs at my pride with new clients. Say that are referred to me. You know, I was referred to you by so and so. And a lot of times I have to say no. You know, I used to gauge how many hours I was at work every week and if I wasn't there for so many hours I was unsuccessful for that week. I have a, a job that's really supportive and I have uh, managers and team members who are really supportive of me being a working moms. I could work at a company that I have to work a lot more hours and I could make more money but I choose to be at a job where I'm you know, not making it a ton of money, but I um, am able to support my family and then I'm able to be home and, you know, see my kids for dinner and bedtime every night. I think if you had asked my high school self where I would be at this point in my life, I would have been doing something much more prestigious, um, would have been looking for a really important title to have um, and probably would have been making a lot more money. Um, so. I don't necessarily feel like I'm missing out on those things, but I definitely think that I could have been maybe further along my career than I am now, or be just in a different line of work where um, I didn't need as much flexibility in my schedule if I didn't have a child. My work life would probably be um, a much bigger portion of my life than it is now. Having a full-time job and then coming home and being a mom, it's it's hard to focus on things that are not in your face and asking for your attention. So um, faith can be one of those things that kind of gets neglected or forgotten about sometimes. But at the same time, I think my faith is strengthened because I have to lean on God to help me get through um, all of the just challenges that arise from that. Definitely creates a barrier in just the time aspect. Um, I know it's, it, moms, I think we tend to beat ourselves up about just about everything. And um, on top of the, you know, feeling like you might be working too much or not being with your child enough, certainly it's always in the back of my mind that I'm not spending enough time reading the Bible, spending enough time in prayer. Um, so I think there's kind of a guilt factor that goes along with that, with many of the other things that you feel guilty about as a mom. I hit the ground running. It's nonstop until I come home and then your exhaustion sets in. So to find that time and to make up, to weave that time for the Lord, yeah, it's tough. So I make sure those 
days are dedicated to my travel to work. So I'm either on my Bible app listening to the word on the way to work or it's praise and worship time. I'm very much a prayer warrior, very much a worshiper. And I taught that to my children. And, um, and you have to do that in your business because you work with people. Everything God does is relational, it's twofold. You know, regardless to, you know, whatever the situation is, that this is a ministry. Um, you know, people just think you're selling houses, but these people become part of your family. So the time that I do get to spend with Harris is extremely precious, and I know he's not getting the spiritual teaching at school. Um, and so that is a huge part of my job as a mom. And so we do try to make that a priority. Um, and it's really pretty cool to watch him, how much he loves to pray already and how he associates holding my hand with saying a prayer. He has definitely taught me to trust him. We come outside and we get all glammed up and you know we make things look easy, but people never know the struggles and the battles you have behind the scenes. And um, they just think you're just perfect like this all the time. That I can say no, um, and that I can do it. I, I struggled a lot. How in the world am I gonna make all this work? How can I be all of these different people and have all these different heads and coats? And that as long as I look to him and I trust in him, you know, it's my prayer every morning before I go into the salon is, you know what? You be my hands, you be my mouth, um, because I can't do this without you. And just relying on Him. I think God's taught me to rely on Him. Um, you know, grow, growing up and going through school, like I always found it really difficult to give God the glory whenever I would like make good grades or do well because I I worked really hard for those. But I know that God has also helped me um, to get there. And He's uh, taught me that you know I do need to glorify him with everything and that I have to rely on him when when times are hard at work or when times are hard at home or when everything just becomes too much um, you know I could just go in a quiet room and just sit there and pray for a few moments and collect myself and then I'm ready to kind of go back out and face everything that's coming at me One of my favorite verses is Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you did not know. I have called him, I call him all the time, daily. Um, and it has helped me build my faith and build my relationship with God. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. He has a plan and that he has a purpose and that he wants me to flourish and to do good and as long as I look to him for he knows the plans for me. Colossians 3.23 which is, um, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And so that reminds me that even if I don't love what I'm doing that day, like I'm not doing it for these people, like I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it to support my family. Well, be still and know I'm the Lord um, is a verse that's always resonated with me because I find it extremely difficult to be still. Um, so I do kind of find that in those quiet moments that I get in the morning um, to myself sometimes that, again, it doesn't have to always be an active reading or an active praying, just sometimes sitting in stillness and letting God speak to me or letting Him just refresh me through the quiet times, the few that I get. Stay prayerful. You can't do this thing without God. And that's in any aspect of your life, especially motherhood, especially in the times that we are in now. You know, when I grew up, TV went off and there was no YouTube and Facebook and all this other stuff. And, and, um, and so you, you're challenging to get your kids' attention and you're, to have that time to, you know, be able to impart into them the love of God and the Word of God um, and not what the world says. And so in order to do that, you have to um, be in the Word and you have to be a good example. What works for you and your family doesn't necessarily work for everybody else. And don't be so quick to judge how other people run their family. Take care of yourself. You're the one that has to answer to God, not, you know, you don't have to answer for them. It's, so you just, you do you. Choose your priorities and make sure that everyone knows what your priorities are and that they're going to be able to support you. So, um, you know, my 
my husband and my kids are able to support me whenever I need to be at work and my work can support me whenever I need to be at home. To be patient with yourself, with your spouse, with your child, because there is definitely a transition period built in, um, to not feel like you have to have every area of your life compartmentalized immediately right away, um, just knowing that you will find a routine, that you will be able to make time for the things that are important for you, um, and things will eventually begin to feel normal again. You don't have to buy into the, the guilt that society puts on you and that you constantly are putting on yourself as a mom that you really um, can try to have freedom from that and knowing that your child is doing fine and you're doing great and everything's gonna be okay.